So we are in front of the Yamaha Piagero. Piagero? I'm going to guess Piagero. That sounds a little... Flows, flows a bit better. Piagero NP32B. B for black. Uh, and we're going to be unboxing this. Um, there have been a few times on the channel where we have explored instruments that were less than 88 keys and were not weighted. We realize that most of the instruments that we do here are, um, you know, a pianos, you know, proper pianos, acoustic or digital in their, uh, you know, in their, uh, their type or their category. Um, these uh, types of instruments are normally referred to more as keyboards uh, or, uh, you know, portable uh, digital uh, keyboards. They kind of avoid using the word piano. And in fact, Yamaha doesn't use the word piano. This is referred to right on the box as a digital keyboard. Um, but I think it's really great to include these every once in a while because there are uh, large audiences of buyers where a light portable piano that's not 88 keys is actually exactly what is called for, exactly what's needed. Uh, this is an instrument that's battery operated. You can take this uh, on the road, you can play it on the side of the street, you can busk with it. Um, lots of things you could do uh, with an instrument of this size. It could also work as a kind of a portable uh, instrument to take on a road trip or on a vacation. So plenty of, of times where this could be actually the most appropriate musical tool uh, for the job. So we're going to unbox it, we're going to have some fun with it, we're going to take a peek at it, share our impressions, uh, and let you at home know a little bit more about this very popular NP32. So let's get started. Our scissors are hurting. These are like the least sharp scissors you could possibly imagine. Okay, so we've got our power adapter, we've got our music stand, and somewhere in here is probably a tiny little sustain pedal, but I'm not seeing it just yet. And then this, which pops out. Thank you very much, Lee. This is light. This is very light. This feels like, I don't know, 15 to 20 pounds or something something in that range. It's extremely portable. The finish quality on this is actually a lot higher than I was expecting for its size and its price. And no pedal. Well, that's okay. Not every instrument needs a pedal. And then I'm guessing this is for the batteries. Here is the Yamaha Piagero MP32. And, oh no, it does have a sustain pedal. And a USB. Oh cool, so you could use this actually for MIDI input. That could be very handy, because this is nice and small. So I could see this being uh, quite a convenient little uh, low-cost uh, MIDI controller for people who need, what is that, four octaves? It's probably about four octaves. One, two, three, four, five. Um, all right, so we're gonna get this set up. We're gonna plug it in, we're gonna power it up. We're gonna see what it sounds like. So thanks very much for being with us uh, for today's video. And uh, yeah, we'll be back in just a quick second. Okay, so we are set up now in front of the MP32. I've got a sustain pedal plugged in. We've got the USB plugged in to uh, my phone because we have downloaded the Yamaha Digital Piano Controller app. Uh, and we've just been playing around with the sounds. Okay, so first with the action. This action is, um, I don't know if you would officially call this a waterfall action because that's probably for people who are real uh, electric organ aficionados. That's, that probably is a very, very specific type of action. Um, but this is definitely a spring-loaded action. There's no counterweighting mechanism there. Definitely nothing like, uh, you know, escapement or anything. This is a keyboard action and there is some pressure sensitivity to it, so. Uh, but it's pretty subtle. We've got a little bit of matte finishing on the black keys, which is pretty cool. Um, the gap between the white keys is a little larger than what you normally get on a digital piano, but you know, that's really not that big a deal. Uh, I think the point is uh, that, you know, for a portable, highly light, battery-operated keyboard, this is, is actually fairly easy to still play, you know, the piano and still play uh, piano pieces on it. So, I mean, I could see myself taking this with me uh, in a car somewhere, if I was if I was going to be killing some time in a parking lot, or uh, you know, going to visit some people, and I wanted an instrument just to do some writing on or something when we had a spare few hours, 
can totally see myself taking something like this uh, because the keyboard is close enough that you're still able to connect with your other piano technique and, and not have it feel like a complete foreign instrument. I haven't measured those. It feels like they might be like a millimeter or two millimeters slightly uh, narrower than what I'm used to. Um... But it's pretty easy to play. Uh, the speakers on the side of this are also pretty decent. Uh, I have not checked the wattage, but I suspect it's probably something like a pair of five watt or pair of six watt speakers, uh, something like that. Um, and in terms of the selection of sounds on there, we have 10 and they're all pretty decent. Uh, one of the things that was surprising to me was that the organs, I was expecting this to uh, be an electric organ, like a Hammond style organ, but is in fact uh, a pipe organ. So there must be an audience uh, out there that's using this uh, for maybe worship settings, um, I would think. Um, but yes, I was kind of th thinking that this was going to be uh, like a Jimmy Smith sound, but it is not. But the quality of the sound is quite good. Um, so it's a very basic set of uh, functions and features. We've got, like I said, uh, let's see, 510, uh, pretty decent sounds, and I'll quickly go through them for you here. So here is the primary piano acoustic sound. The second piano sound, much more mellow. Um, e piano. of an e-piano DX sound. You've already heard one of the organs. There's the other one. And strings. Vibes. And finally, harpsichord. And harpsichord too. I think it's just harpsichord one with an octave doubler on it. There's also a basic recorder on there and you've got a metronome. But where this gets really fun, um, and I think they've done a fantastic job of this, is the software controller. 
Uh, you can use this with a tablet, you can use this with a phone. I've hooked it up to an iPhone 10, um, and I'm actually just going to press record on my screen so that we can get this as B-roll into there. So what you're seeing uh, is the menu where you can visually select the instrument. Uh, and there's two different ways to view it. You can view it as this grid style or you can view it kind of as a uh, photo gallery, this kind of thing. Um, but what I find really exceptional is that the movement of the interface is so fluid. Um, it actually makes it a little more fun uh, to use. So there's the Grand Piano 1. We've, we've already heard all of these. But as you go through them, there's these little info, warm and soft piano sound, and then there's a little demo button as well. Uh, and then we've got e-piano, and then we've got like that Rhodes there, the organs, all of that stuff. But then there's some other menus as well. So this is where we access transpose. Uh, we've got MIDI options, uh, which is actually very cool to have that as an, uh, uh, some of those parameters be editable. Metronome, uh, reverb settings are there. Touch sensitivity, auto power off. We've got tuning control. And then this is also where we can access our song uh, recording. And this makes it so much more fun uh, when you have a proper interface. You can feel like you can interact with your recordings and properly organize them and visualize them. Uh, this is really very well done. Um, I would say, obviously, not everybody is going to have a device like this that you can hook up to it. Uh, but if you do, I don't think it takes the latest and greatest. I mean, I think pretty much any relatively current iOS device uh, will, will probably do the trick. Uh, I'm assuming it's available on Android. I don't know that for sure, but I, I, I suspect uh, that it is. Um, I would really highly suggest uh, making sure that you get yourself a cable. Uh, this one right here uh, cost me about $8 on Amazon, and it is... Uh, the type of cable, it's not very common uh, because this is not the same as like a USB charging cable in your phone. I just want to point that out. It actually has like this end on it. It doesn't have the other end. So it's like, it looks like a printer cable on this side. And then this one just goes into your phone. So you usually do have to special order these because they're not going to be common to find in your electronics store, but they're, they're very inexpensive. So uh, like I said, I'm just making kind of a big deal about the fact that you get a lot more, or you heighten your experience with this when you use the app, and the app is well done. It's simple to use, the graphics are high quality, really, really makes a nice difference. So there's, there's our take on the MP32. We've got a portable instrument that's very, very affordable, um, very portable, uh, but a couple of fairly advanced features. You've got some major MIDI filtering and, and, and MIDI transmit options in there so that you can actually use this uh, as a MIDI controller if you're on the go and you're just doing some writing and you don't want to be stuck on one of these little two octave things. You need something with a, with, you know, a bit more uh, you know, key real estate this is gonna give it to you. It's got some sensitivity. The, the piano and, and the rest of, of the uh, patch tones are actually pretty high quality. Uh, and you've got decent onboard speakers uh, that are giving you some really nice direct sound. Uh, all in all, um, I'd say that this, is a, this is product is a hard to beat product for, for the price in terms of what it really gives you. Um, I guess the competing ones would be like the Roll and Go piano. Uh, sort of falls into this category as well. And so we'll make sure that we actually review and possibly even compare the Roll and Go uh, with the Yamaha just so we can give you the pros and cons. But uh, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this. For people out there looking for this type of keyboard, uh, I really, you know, see nothing that you're, you're going to be disappointed with uh, in this instrument. So have at it. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. We really appreciate that you've joined us. And if it was the first time that you've seen one of our videos, we would love it if you subscribed because it lets us keep you up to date and informed every single time we come out with a new video. And we love 
making videos. We love watching videos, we love making videos, we love everything to do about sharing our information and knowledge about pianos with you. So thank you so much. Hope to see you back for more videos in the future. Have yourself a great day. Take care.